Dear students, welcome you all to this uh, video on ARM instruction set. Uh, I hope you all have watched the previous video which was about uh, addressing modes and I hope you are all clear with the seven addressing modes of ARM um, architecture. And if you have not watched, please watch that video before you watch uh, this video on ARM instruction set because if you have to understand the details of instruction set, uh, you should be clear uh, with the seven different addressing modes that is supported by ARM. Uh, so please watch that if you have enough. Now uh, let's move on to the uh, ARM instruction set. I have just made uh, three small videos on instruction set because otherwise it is it's going to be a very long video. So this, this will be just video part one. Okay. So moving on to uh, ARM 7 instruction set, you have 10 different types of uh, instructions in ARM 7. Uh, you will really appreciate if you understand uh, how intelligently these in instructions were made okay so because arm is a latest processor not like the 70s 80s processor that we were seeing as 8051 this has got very interesting uh, instructions and everything is very carefully designed uh, and then you know you it is put into the instruction set so that they do uh, you know, real wonders and so let's see one by one the first instruction is the data movement instruction okay which is for moving data between registers that is within the processor okay not with memory but within the processor next you have the load and store instructions yes the only two instructions with which we access the memory is the load and store right so we have the load and store instructions so we'll be seeing the different types of load and store instructions supported by arm 7 then third category we have uh, as usual in any other processor we have the arithmetic and logical instructions so here ARM7 also has a uh, few arithmetic and logical instructions. And next, uh, though multiply is an arithmetic instruction, we have some special instructions for multipli multiplication because you know that we have a separate multiplier unit in ARM processor. That is ARM architecture, we discussed about it. So we have some special instructions for multiplication that is called multiply instructions. We also have some long multiply instructions these are all some of the unique uh, features that we have in arm 7 uh, and so they are long multiply which means a 32 bit number will be multiplied with the 32 bit number and you will get a 64 bit result so what are those instructions and we'll be seeing the details of it and we have the sixth category is the very important category in arm 7 is the branch instructions okay so they are the instructions that help us to either jump to a location if a condition is satisfied or it it also helps us to call a subroutine okay when you are in a main program you want to call a sub program or a subroutine you also use these branch instructions and you have flag related instructions as we are all aware that user mode and system mode has got cpsr and all other different five modes okay that is supervisor abort mode undefined mode uh, interrupt and fast interrupt modes have their own uh, SPSR. So there are some instructions that allow us to communicate with these flag registers. They are called flag related instructions. The eighth category is we have some semaphore related swap instructions. Now these instructions are like ARM has a special feature that you can add coprocessors which means like you can add a coprocessor to do only the mathematical uh, high-end mathematical calculations so we can add a math coprocessor so any complicated mathematics to be done arm will just direct it to the coprocessor and coprocessor will take care of such instructions so like that you can add uh, nearly up to 16 coprocessors can be added uh, in arm it is one of the special features so when you add coprocessors you need some instructions for that that is some of the related swap instructions and uh, we have some multiple register data transfer here also and this is especially whenever you want to deal with stack operations okay you have a dedicated set of instructions and that is also known as stack instructions and the last category is we have some special instructions uh, which helps us to move into supervisor mode system mode and all that so they are the last category special instructions so all put together 
ARM 7 has got 10 category of instructions, okay, totally 10 categories. So in this video, we will be seeing about the uh, four categories, that is branch, data movement, load and store, arithmetic and logic instructions, okay. So this video will cover those instructions. Let's see one by one. Now, usually it is, uh, the list is in a different order, but I am purposely starting with branch instruction. Uh, you, you may understand why I am doing this at the later part. As I told you, one of the most important instruction set of ARM7 is these branch instructions. Okay, Branch instructions uh, play a major role. You will understand the reason as we go through the video. So now let's see what are the branch instructions that are available in ARM7. So here you can see these are the uh, 18 different types of branch instructions that are there in uh, ARM7. Let's go one by one. This is this branch is similar to the jump that you have in 8051 or even 8085 also you have jump instructions, right? So this is very similar to a jump which means uh, it will take you to a new location. Okay, so whenever I use these branches from one location, I will be moving to a new location. Uh, certain branches are conditional and there is one branch that is unconditional, the first one. Okay, so other than that everything is conditional branch. So if the condition is satisfied, it will take me to a new location. So that is what is meant by uh, these branch instructions. So please remember this uh, number, 18 branch instructions are there. Okay, this 18 number is very, very important. We will be using this uh, throughout the entire video. Okay, so you have to remember these 18 conditions throughout the video. So the first one is uh, called the just B, which is unconditional branch. Okay, there is no condition to be satis satisfied. If that B instruction is there, you have to jump. Okay, there is no other go. And BAL is branch always, okay, so these both are almost the same, okay, so this is uh, BAL is branch always, so that is where they are put together. Um, branch always means whatever be the condition, either satisfied or not satisfied, you have to branch. Okay, so here a PC will get, suppose the other, for example, B down, okay, so down is the location where you have to jump, right, so PC will get the address of down and then, you know, the uh, this is same as jump in case of any Intel processes. Okay, yeah. Then the next uh, branch instructions are branch never. Okay, so here, uh, why do you need an instruction which is asking you not to branch? Okay, so this is mainly introduced. Uh, do you remember we when we saw the pipeline video, we saw something called as hazards. Right. So we saw different types of hazards, structural hazard, data hazard and also we saw what is known as branch hazard. So whenever there is a branch, there is a possibility that your pipeline uh, will get a disturbance. Right. So such instructions are otherwise known as no operation instructions. So they are just fetched, decoded and you know executed just to waste the time of the processor, just to spend some time of the processor so that by the time you know the pipeline comes to a proper uh, form okay and so they are called as delay instructions okay so that's why you have branch never then branch if carry is set so if the carry flag you know that the flag bits right so if the carry flag is set then you have to branch so this is same as jump if carry okay in any intel processor you would have seen that similarly branch if carry is clear okay so if carry flag is zero then you have to branch similarly branch if overflow is set branch if overflow is clear okay the b flag that we discussed then branch if minus that is negative flag you remember we have a special flag called the negative flag so whenever the negative flag is one then you have to branch when the negative flag is zero you have to branch so branch minus branch plus okay that is what is this meaning mi means minus pl means plus branch if equal okay so if uh, the previous instruction, uh, suppose you are comparing two numbers, A and B, and in that previous instruction, if A is equal to B, okay, how do you find that? You subtract A from B, okay, and then find out if zero flag is set. When two numbers are same, when you subtract them, your zero flag will be set, right? So whenever you are, when you subtract two numbers, if zero flag is set, okay, when you compare the two numbers, if zero flag is set, that means two numbers are equal. Uh, then you have to go for this instruction. So if your previous instruction says that the two numbers are equal, then you have to branch. If the zero flag is not set, if the zero flag is zero, I mean 
it is not equal to 1 it is 0 then you will, you will take up this branch branch not equal branch equal branch not equal okay then branch if higher that is you compare two numbers if the first number is higher that is you get a positive answer by subtracting two numbers that means first number is higher right then branch so branch if higher branch if higher or same so either two numbers are uh, a suppose you subtract a and b either a is higher than b or a is equal to b then you branch then that is this condition here branch if lower okay if you compare two numbers and you find out that you know the you get a negative uh, result that means one the second number is lower than the first number then branch if lower branch if lower or same same as higher or same here it is lower or same okay branch is branch if greater than branch if greater than or equal branch if lower lesser than branch if lesser than or equal these are all the common ones that you see in any of the uh, intel processes also right so that is about this branch instructions so here you can see uh, you know the branch instructions are 18 uh, different categories of branch instructions are there so remember this word 18 so let me just quickly say branch always branch never okay branch if carry is set branch if carry is clear branch if overflow is set branch if overflow is clear branch minus branch plus branch equal branch not equal branch if higher branch if higher or same branch if lower branch if lower or same branch greater than branch greater than or equal branch lesser than branch lesser than or equal okay so these four uh, branches are if they are signed numbers that is if you have a sign bit these four uh, would be specially used okay yeah so that's about the uh, branch instructions so there are two categories of branch instructions in arm one is equal to jumping so if check for a condition if condition is satisfied then you jump to a new location this is one kind of branch the second type of branch uh, instructions that we have in arm is uh, equal to call type it is you know you are in one location you are suppose you are in the main program you are calling a subroutine okay or you are calling a sub program that also comes under branch instruction but it's a second category of branch the previous one is jumping here this is calling okay so there you move here you call it is a difference so here you have two types of uh, branch uh, that belongs to call type one is bl which is branch with link okay suppose for example bl delay then which means what there is a subroutine by name delay so you're calling that subroutine okay that is the meaning of this branch with link so what all happens is your so that means you're moving from your main program to your sub program so first your pc value will be stored into lr okay then when your <coughs> Then and then whatever is your delay address that address will be loaded into PC okay and then when the subroutine is over end of the subroutine your LR will have to be copied back to PC okay so PC will get the return address <coughs> and this instruction you can also add any one of the 18 conditions you remember 18 the number 18 you have to keep on the entire uh, video I will be talking about that 18 number so you can you know branch with link if equal branch with link if plus branch with link link if minus branch with link if higher like that you can add any one of those 18 uh, conditions can be added here okay <coughs> then branch with link and exchange it is same as that of the previous one okay but then it will help uh, not only go to a subroutine it will also help you to enter into thumb state okay and it will invoke or it will call a thumb subroutine you're getting the difference so here it will call a subroutine within the arm uh, state but here it will call a subroutine which is there in the thumb state which is the thumb subroutine also getting it so you have two states right arm state and thumb state so when you want to call a subroutine within the arm state you use branch with link 
you want to call a subroutine which is in the thumb state you use branch blx which is branch with link and exchange okay so here also you can add any of these 18 uh, conditions see i i told you throughout this 18 will be used that's why i covered that at the beginning okay hope this is clear uh, with branch and branch of jump type and branch of call type okay now moving to the uh, data movement uh, instructions okay now please listen to this very carefully because this is a very interesting uh, category of instructions data movement okay so here we have just uh, two instructions okay under data movement only two instructions but see it can be written in variety of ways we'll see what it is first is the the move instruction m o v I think this we are very familiar with 80, 85, 80, 80, 86, 51, everywhere we have seen this move instruction. So we are moving, uh, uh, say so for example it can be written in various ways, move R0, R1. Can you tell me what in addressing modes this is? Register addressing mode, right? You are moving the content of R1 register, copying the content of R1 register into R0 register which means R1 will also have a copy of it. It is not erased completely. You just take a copy of it and put it into R0. So both registers now will have the same value. Getting it? That is about move. You can also have an immediate value in the instruction. Say you are copying the value 25. Whenever you have hash, it means it's a data. Okay, so 25 value is taken and copied into R0. This is also possible. And this is what addressing mode? Yes, it is immediate addressing mode. And immediate addressing mode, what should be the data that is attached to it? What size it should be? It should be only a 8-bit data. Please remember this. You cannot have a 32-bit data here. Okay. So, if you are attaching 8-bit data, but your register is 32-bit. So, how will it be stored in R0? 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, 5. Getting it? So, it will be converted into 32 bits and then stored into R0. Okay. That is one thing that you have to remember. Now, you also have something called as move not. Now, this may sound a little funny. Why should you have an instruction which is not, which is telling you not to move? Then we cannot have the instruction. We need not have the instruction at all, right? That may be the thought running in your mind. But please understand, move not here. This not here means your negation. You remember negation, okay? We studied in uh, digital electronics. That is that not here, complement. So, it is once complement. Okay, not here means once complement, not gate. So here when I say move not R0, R1, when it is move R0, R1, R1 is value is taken and moved into R0. Just plain R, R1 value is taken and moved into R0. But here what happens, when I say move not R1, R0, R1 value will be derived, the once complement of R1 value will be derived. You are getting it? once complement of R1 value will be found and that once complement will be moved to R0. That is the difference between move and move not. In move, exactly R1 value will be moved to R0. In move not, R1, once complement of R1 value will be taken and moved to R0. Interesting, right? Now you may wonder why you have these instructions. Why do you need a move not? Okay. The reason why you have a move not is uh, you will understand when I uh, cover the logical instructions especially you know any processor has only three logical instructions and or and XOR. Please repeat after me there are only th three logical instructions in 8051 also we had only three logical instructions and or and XOR. What if I need to have NAND, NOR and XNOR okay they are all derived uh, logical instructions right they are not direct logical for example nand is taken by uh, and with not right nor is or with not so like that they are derived uh, logical instructions so what if i have to have a nand nor and x nor then i will use this as a first instruction move not so what happens the not value will be taken that is it will be nanded or you know i will first do the and operation then i will do move not Getting it? So, it means AND plus NOT. Then you get NAND. Similarly, I will first do OR operation. Then I will implement this instruction. 
move not. So it is or plus not nor. Similarly, the third, third category, I will take XR operation, then I will use this move not. Then it will become XR plus not equal to X nor. Getting it? So that is one of the major uh, advantage of having this move not instruction in ARM7. Now coming to uh, the, uh, you know, the uh, some more speciality about move instruction. Yes, you can have something like this. Can you guess what this is? What does this mean? Move EQ. Okay. You can also have something like move LS. Move S. I will tell you this is something very special. And then move EQS. Now, you may wonder that, you know, all this is very difficult. It looks so big. Uh, not at all. Just forget about all these extra things. You know, this EQ, LS, S, EQS and all that you forget. Take only the main instruction. So main instruction belongs to move, right? So that you are clear. Moving from one register to another register or immediate to register. So that is move. This EQ, I told you, remember, the 18 different, uh, you know, kind of uh, branch conditions that we will be checking. Isn't it? So this is the 18 number. So just to recall, I have just brought this here. So here, I can add any one of this, you know, this last two. I can add, uh, you know, uh, CS, I can add CC, I can add VS, I can add VC, whatever I want, I can add here. Okay, so all these 18 can be added here. I can just add, you know, move B. That means move, uh, you know, uh, this to this and then branch. So, which means I am combining uh, two things. Okay, move EQ means move if equal. So, previous instruction, there may be some comparison or something. If they are equal, then move. Got it? So, like that I can combine. So, this is possible in ARM7. For first look, you know, when you look at it, it may look uh, complicated or difficult. But when you really understand it, it is very simple. And, uh, you know, you have LS. What is LS actually? Move if H, HS is, HI is higher, HS is higher or same, LO is lower, LO, LS is lower or same. So, move LS means move if the two values are either lower or they are same. Get, got it? So, that is, you, so, you can combine any of these 18 uh, conditions over here that is possible now move s every instruction you can add a word yes this s here means status okay in intel processors suppose you do add okay either you want or not your status flag will be set for example you are adding two numbers you are getting a carry okay you need not specify that carry should be changed and all by default Whenever an arithmetic operation takes place, the flags will be set automatically. You are getting it? But in case of ARM processor, that is not the case. You have to mention when the status have to be set. Otherwise, it will not be set. For example, when I execute move instruction, my status flag will not be set. But when I execute move yes instruction, this, that means I am telling ARM after moving, if there is any situation, please set the status flags. Okay. So, this S whenever it is added. So, there is a difference between add, add S. Add means addition will take place, but carry flag will not be set even if there is a carry. But when, when you write it as add S, addition will take place and carry flag will be set if there is a carry. You are getting it? So, that is the difference when you add S to any instruction. Please remember this very very carefully. This is something very interesting in ARM. In uh, Intel processes, automatically your sign flag will be set. But here it is not like that. Your status flag will be set only when you are asked to set. Okay. Yeah. Now this is, uh, can you now, uh, you know, summarize what is this? MOV is a normal move. EQ is move if equal and set the status bit. Getting it? So, you are merging everything. It may look complicated, but it is very simple. Move. If the previous instruction result is equal. Okay. Not this instruction result. If the previous instruction result is equal, then move. And if that has brought any change in the status, update the status flags. Okay. So, you are asking the status flag to be updated. If you do not put this yes, nothing will happen to the status flag. They will remain as it is. Getting it? Hope this is clear. 
and this is very very interesting thing about you know every instruction and arm you can you know manipulate it into these different types okay so now we'll move to the next set of instructions that is you know data transfer instructions okay data transfer instructions so you have only two types of data transfer instructions uh, namely load instruction and store instructions okay now coming to uh, the load instructions so what happens to load instructions whenever you use load instructions uh, you are loading a value you know from uh, any one of the registers uh, into you know sorry you are loading a value from register into one of uh, from memory into one of the registers into arm okay so you are taking something from memory and loading it into one of the registers of arm that is load store means from the registers of arm you are taking a value and storing it into memory okay so that is they are both are opposite to each other when you take it from memory it is loading when you put it back a value into memory it is storing okay so let's see what are the different types of load instructions one is a simple uh, ldr which is load register so here you can see this is what addressing mode this is in what addressing mode can somebody answer here direct or indirect yeah this is direct addressing mode right so here you sorry it is indirect addressing mode so here what you do see here is you you go to r1 you will not have the data there instead you will have a address value so go to that address value and then you put the take the value from that address location and load it into r0 okay so r0 will get the data that is available in r1 address location r1 is not a data r1 is having an address go to that address you will have a data take that data and put it into r0 got it yeah this is about the uh, load instruction now this load instruction as i told you arm supports 8 bit 16 bit and 32 bit right so this ldr is meant for 32 bit data transfer okay simply a 32 bit data which is pointed by location r1 is taken and loaded into a 32 bit register r0 so 32 32 everything is solved okay but when i add a b here okay so this b here means byte so load byte into register byte is how many bits 8 bits right so what you're doing is r1 is a address value you go to that address location you will have only an 8 bit data that means you have you should not uh, you, you should not take the next next location of memory just one location r1 says 20 go to exactly location 20 and take only 8 bit data okay but here when r1 says 20 you have to take from 20 21 22 23 four locations got it because your memory is arranged like that right so when you want a 32 bit data you have to take from four memory locations but when you want an 8 bit data just take from r1 location alone okay and load it into r0 but what happens if the remaining bits because r0 register is 32 but we are only loading 8 bits so what happens to the remaining bits is you have to upload it with 0 remaining bits in r0 becomes 0 got it so that is the speciality of the word b added here when i add h h means half word okay so half word means how many bits 16 bits so you have to take go to r1 and also r1 plus 1 go to the next memory location so you have to take 16 bits okay take 16 bits and load it into r0 the remaining 16 bits will be 0 okay now this is you know when it is a uh, you know when it's an unsigned number this is the correct way of doing it if your uh, 8 bit uh, number is unsigned okay no harm you can just add uh, zeros and then make it 32 similarly if the 16 bit number also is unsigned no harm you can add that many zeros in front and then make it as a 32 bit but what if the number is signed number suppose it's a signed byte and signed half byte then you cannot use these two instructions you have two other special instructions which is ldr means load s means signed number and b means byte so load signed byte so now what you what you should do you cannot append zeros 
okay blindly you cannot append zero so you have to see what is the sign bit out of the eight eight bits msb will be the sign bit right if sign bit is zero then you can add zeros so if the sign bit is one then you have to make you have to add ones okay and who does this job can you remember when we we saw the details of this in arm architecture so which block is doing this job you have a separate block called sign extension you remember that sign extension will do this job okay similarly if it's a half bit that is if it's a 16 bit number the msb you will have to carefully look at it if msb is 0 then you add zeros if msb is 1 then you have to extend 1 so you have to be very careful if it's a signed number getting it yes now you have uh, one more uh, interesting thing here in arm architecture is ldr t okay ldr t which means uh, you know i told you uh, these are all latest processors okay so what you see in your mobile what you see as uh, you know in the latest devices will be there in these instructions that is one thing very interesting to study about arm so why do you have this T as I told you when we were seeing the different operating modes uh, video also I have mentioned uh, you know you have uh, system data system program and then you have user data user program when you are in the user mode you will not be able to access system data right now the difference between simple LDR and LDR T I'm telling you now when I write a simple LDR what happens uh, suppose I am a hacker okay I can be in the user mode and I can try to access data from the system mode okay my LDR will allow me to do that it will not generate any error or it will not uh, stop me from doing it suppose I'm a hacker and I want to take the data from the privileged mode okay if I write just simple LDR I'll be able to do that but if I write LDR T okay T does not have any extension on that it is used for protection Okay, just to protect your uh, system data from any hackers so when I use the instruction LDRT uh, if I am in the user mode user level okay if I am running a user level program I will not be able to access data from the system uh, data okay I will not be able to access system data or the sensitive data that are stored in the supervisor mode okay if I try to do that then what will be generated is you will get a data abort error automatically your uh, processor will change over to that mode that is the uh, abort mode okay so that we saw that in the modes of operation also so that protection facility is possible uh, when I use LDR T instead of using simple LDR when I use simple LDR anybody can you know try to access uh, there will not be any data about uh, error will not be generated but then here when I use T subscript with the letter T uh, that means I am preventing the access of system data suppose I am in the uh, supervisor mode then this will not give any error it will allow you to access the system data but if I am in the user mode and try to access it will generate an abortion about error getting it yeah now uh, same thing can be done with uh, you know load instructions also so load str means sorry store instructions also str means store register so you are storing the uh, r0 content uh, into the address that is given in register r1 okay yeah so str is used for 32 bit uh, data transfer and str b is for byte that is 8 bit str h is half word 16 bit str sb is for signed byte okay as we saw in the load and str sh is for signed half word okay so whenever the number is signed and when you want to store you will use str sb when it is byte and sh when it is half word and when it is 32 bit naturally you need not have signed unsigned and all that because 32 is just easily taken and loaded okay no need to add any zeros in front or one in front so that is why that doesn't have any signed unsigned categories okay and similarly store also when you want to uh, in, involve a protection scheme then you know you can add a t in front of it so that you know you can safely uh, use it and whenever there is a misuse of these instructions and naturally a data bot exception or interrupt will be generated and your user mode will be transferred to a bot mode okay about mode of operation so 
the next is arithmetic and uh, logic instructions so here it's very simple you have the normal add <coughs> okay which is a basic addition it, you can I, as we already saw in the architecture video you can have triadic operations in arm you can mention three registers which means it'll add r1 and r2 and store the uh, result in r0 okay that kind of possibility is there in arm so that is basic addition if you don't want you can also just stop with two so it will add r0 and r1 and store it into r0 that is also possible and add with carry means it will add r1 r2 and if there is any carry generated carry also will be added and stored into r0 then similarly you have a basic subtraction so r1 minus r2 will be subtracted result will be stored in r0 subtract with borrow r1 minus r2 and minus if there is any carry okay carry flag is used as borrow flag but please remember if you are using subtraction <coughs> and if your carry borrow is uh, there in the subtraction your carry flag will become zero no borrow means your carry flag will become one that is negation of it if you add there is a carry carry flag will become one if you subtract and there is a borrow your carry flag will become zero you are getting it <coughs> that's why it is written as negation of carry okay so that is that is something that you have to remember in arm and uh, similarly you also have something called as reverse subtraction so when you want to subtract r2 minus r1 okay instead of r1 minus r2 when you want to subtract r2 minus r1 then you can go for this reverse subtraction similarly reverse subtraction with carry r2 minus r1 minus negation of carry bit okay now in all these instructions your status flag will not be set carry will not be set here in case of if there is a carry here borrow will not be set here if there is a borrow here okay so nothing will be set but if you have to set them you have to add and yes getting it so when you want a status flag to be set then your add cannot be written as add it has to be written as adds so add also will add adds also will add but add will just add it will not set the status flag adds will add and then set the status flag also if there is a carry carry flag will be set getting it that is the difference now whenever there is a borrow again i am repeating your carry flag will become zero and if there is no borrow carry flag will become one just opposite of uh, addition addition means if there is a carry flag will become one no carry flag will become zero but here after subtraction if there is a borrow carry flag will become zero there is no borrow carry flag will become one getting it yeah that is about uh, the arithmetic instructions now coming to logic instructions you have as i told you the three main instructions are and or and xor okay so and will and the two register contents or will or the two contents and xor okay and b i c so b i c is nothing but and with complement so what it will do is uh, it will take r1 as it is and it will take complement of the second register content r2 okay and then perform and operation okay and that is so, so you see what all you are doing you are performing and operation you are also complementing so many things are done in single instructions okay that is uh, possible here and you have compare uh, instructions this is whenever you want to you know uh, compare two values two variables uh, two register contents you use this so it will perform actually when you say r0 minus r uh, compare r0 comma r1 it will subtract r0 minus r1 okay and but it will not store the subtraction result anywhere okay no result is needed here it will just subtract and then suppose if r0 and r1 are same zero flag will be set r0 is greater than r1 okay positive flag will be set r0 is lesser than r1 negative flag will be set so result will not be stored anywhere depending on this uh, subtraction the flags will be set accordingly now you can look at the flag and then decide whether r0 is equal to r1 greater than r1 or lesser than r1 now next is you have a special compare compare with negated value so here what happens is it will first perform r0 plus r1 okay but it will not store the result but it will again affect the uh, flags okay so it will take uh, 
the negation of so minus of minus will become plus okay it will take negation of r1 and then it will add it with r0 now similarly uh, you have also called us you know test instruction okay tst so here you can you you will take the logical and and it will not it only it will affect the flags here also result will not be stored so suppose it is tst r0 comma r1 it will perform r0 and and operation r1 okay again here it will not here it will store the result in this and operation it will store the result but here it will not store the result it will just you know uh, affect the flags according to the value okay so this is all mainly used for setting a bit clearing a bit and so on similarly logical or also okay it will just perform r0 uh, r1 okay or operation and then it will not store the result but it will just affect the flags okay now this and or xor uh, they all of them do not affect the flags okay if you want the flags to be affected what you should do is you should add a yes as a post fix okay again this is applicable here also as we saw in the arithmetic instruction so when you want the flag to be set you have to uh, use an s here so and s okay then or s x or s so when you add an s here then status flag will be set anyway for this 5, 6, 7 and 8, uh, you know, the results will not be stored, okay, but then automatically status flag will be uh, set. So, you need not write a yes here, okay, here automatically status flags will be set, but for these uh, instructions, your status flags will have to be set, that means you have to add a yes here, clear? So, that is about the uh, logical instructions of ARM processor, okay, now coming to the review question. Now, hope you have understood. This is just one portion of the um, instruction set. We are yet to cover uh, remaining. Um, I'll cover it in the next video. So, the review question after watching this video is, please post it in the Google Classroom. Is it possible for ARM7 to execute NAND, NOR and XNOR instructions? Okay. If so, how? So, that is the question. Uh, please give a detailed answer uh, for this question in the uh, Google Classroom and I will go through it. So, dear students, thank you very much for uh, watching this video. Hope you are all uh, staying safe at home. Uh, just a small tip, uh, please have a lot of hot water. Uh, please add a bit of ginger and lime to it Okay, and drink at least twice to thrice a day. Okay, this will boost your immunity power and please have a lot of citric based fruits like orange, grapes, lemon and so on and also try to add you know ginger, garlic and all that in your food and you know add a lot of pepper and onion and all this and also greens to be added in your food okay because this will all boost your immunity. So stay safe, I mean stay safe and take care of your health. Okay, thank you students.